I'm Charles Dewa, I'm the managing director of a company called Knowledge Transfer Africa, based in Zimbabwe. As the name suggests, we are more interested in how knowledge travels in Africa. It could be knowledge from the West, and how does it interface with that that already exists in, in communities, which uh, links to our interest in collective cultural memory. This is part of knowledge that exists in a community where people do a lot of things together, share their problems, solve health issues, but cultural issues as well. You find that there's a lot of knowledge there, cultural memory, which dates back to generations before, which has been passed on to modern, more modern generations. This knowledge usually, having interfaced with the Western knowledge, you find that it's not being given much prominence. So we're trying to say, no, any intervention that comes from the from outside should be able to sit on that collective cultural memory of the people in a particular situation who solve their own problems, health issues, they treat diseases, they are able to survive even in the harshest conditions. Most of them are even grappling with climate change issues. So that's the collective cultural base, uh, collective cultural memory, knowledge of how people do their things together as a community, uh, solving problems. Yes, natural sources of knowledge is, um, this refers to how knowledge travels in people. People represent knowledge. Usually sometimes for you, for us to really see that this is knowledge, there should be a person as an inter intervener. People are the ones who express knowledge, either in artistically. Some of them, they do a lot of artistic work. If you move around many countries, you find that there's a, a lot of artistic work that was done many years ago. If there, wasn't, there were no people doing that, you wouldn't have seen that. So there is a lot of uh, cultural state of uh, that state of knowledge which exists because people have intervened to produce something. This actually exists mainly in African countries where you see that uh, uh, there's a lot of knowledge that exists uh, which you don't find even in modern literature, modern books. For instance, uh, there are about more than 2,000 diverse kind of uh, herbs, uh, trees in Africa which people depend on. Which, if you look in, nom in Latin nomenclature, you don't find that. So, the, the assumption that knowledge only exists maybe in books or in just been collected up or in artifacts, sometimes you find that can, can mislead us. Which is why we really, I'm very happy to talk about the natural set of knowledge. We, it involves people, the environment as well, where naturally knowledge is.